So this game against the Storm is really good, and it's not just me that thinks that way. Will it make for a good video? That remains to be seen. It says I played 67 hours in the last two weeks. I don't know how accurate that actually is. And I thought a fun challenge would be to start over at level one and attempt a vice or a difficulty, which is the hardest one you have access to. Until I guess later, you could unlock a harder difficulty. This challenge is very hard because you don't have access to a lot of buildings that you later will unlock by playing. And though I did finally complete it, what I didn't realize was the game actually tracks your win rate. And you can see here, I restarted the game five times until I got a pretty optimal start, and then I was finally able to beat the vice difficulty. That being said, using this method, we're going to wipe the game again. So we start back over at level one, where we only have one upgrade. And not only are we missing a ton of blueprints, there's a ton of really useful upgrades that we're missing. And without going into too many details, we have one stack of this Queen's Patience buff, which essentially slows the rate at which we lose the game. If we had progressed to level 16 and unlocked all these middle nodes, we would have 16 stacks of it. And so we'd essentially lose the game 30% slower. That's just an example. There's tons and tons of other bonuses that you get from leveling up. So the fact that we're starting at level one makes this challenge very difficult. At the start of the game, there's always going to be this fertile grounds modifier that increases the chance that blades have fertile soil by 60%, but that's not going to synergize at all with our starting lineup. We have six lizards who are good at hunting, three beavers who are good at wood cutting, and two random people, which hopefully will be humans because humans are really good at farming. Or we could go with nine lizards, but that's just less people, and I think having more people at the start's better. Since we're only level one, we only get one embarkation point, which means we can only bring along one extra resource. At level five, I had three embarkation points and a bunch of extra things I could bring along that are actually pretty important. Important. So yeah, we get kind of screwed here. Lizards eat eggs, and since we have six lizards, let's go for the eggs as a food source. We could start with some extra wood as well, but wood is plentiful in this biome. Trees give more wood, and I think this means they give double wood. When starting the game, we get a random beneficial effect, and on my previous runs, I would restart the game every time we get a crappy one, but that does count as a loss. So we're just gonna go with what we get here, and a beneficial effect is really good. During the drizzle season, we gain two resin every time we cut down a tree, and every playthrough, you're gonna have looming darkness, which lowers resolve and makes people upset, but then we also get four Four random negative effects that are only active during the storm and only active if the forest is too hostile. We got two effects for hostility. One, during the storm we get 30% lowered movement speed off road and villagers will get minus five penalty to their resolve if they don't have housing. Starting at hostility four, villagers have a 10% chance of consuming twice the amount of food and this affects skills with hostility. So at hostility five, I'm sure this is 20. At hostility six, it's 30. Hostility seven is 40, etc. This one's pretty nasty, but it's only active from hostility seven. We lose someone during the storm if we get to hostility facility 7, which we could prevent that. And overall, this start is very manageable. I would be surprised if I F this up. Our starting glade has random resources in it, and we got pretty lucky here as well. We have a clay deposit, which we can harvest with a tier 2 stonecutter camp that the game so graciously gives you at the start. Most of your camps start out at only the tier 1 level, like this small trapper camp, and you have to find the blueprints to upgrade it later. We also made two woodcutter camps, and we're going to stock them with beavers. We started with five beavers, so both of our random villagers were beavers, which is really lucky again. Beavers are also really efficient at woodcutting. They get a 10% chance to double their yield. Lizards are really good at hunting, so starting near these slick shell broodmothers was pretty lucky as well. They get that 10% chance to double their yield when harvesting those. And up here we did tunnel into a smaller glade already, which has more things that we can hunt, which again I feel like is very lucky because we do have six lizards. Near the start of the game and after each storm we get to choose a cornerstone. This one on the left really sucks because if villagers die then the queen gets really unhappy. On this difficulty her impatience grows by 0.3 which is a ton, and when this red impatience meter gets to full you lose. So we're going to take advanced fuel, any fuel recipes are made 33% faster, and there's no guarantee we're ever going to get any fuel recipes, but if villagers are dying, we're pretty much guaranteed to lose, unless the run goes really well and we get some amazing quests, which we're about to find out. If we keep lizard resolve above 13 for 30 seconds and we get two lizards, some meat, and some parts, which the parts are really useful. It takes three for one of those trappers camps that we just made. Or we have to find one ancient tablet and we get some stuff that we don't really need. I'd much rather have this reward on the right. The next quest wants us to make a stone cutter camp, which we've already done, a harvester camp, which we can do. We begin with a tier two version of this camp as well. And we have to make 10 bricks, which we can easily do because we started near clay. So we can turn that clay into bricks. And with the reward, we'll get some of that clay back. Plus we'll get some reeds, which we don't really need reeds right now. And three parts though, which is useful. Or if we sell goods worth 15 amber to a trader, we get two random villagers, 20 oil, and 10 amber, all of which is useful. Before we choose that quest, I want to look at our starting building blueprints. We have three to choose from here, and the brickyard would give us much better efficiency at making bricks. The ratio here is only three clay to two bricks, whereas if we wanted to make them at our crude workstation, it's six clay to two bricks. Or if we want to greatly increase our plank efficiency, right now it's eight wood to two planks, we could opt for the lumber mill, which produces planks at a three star level, and that would give us a ratio of three wood to two planks, and I like this more because we're going to be getting so much wood so we can mass produce 
produce planks and we could sell them to traders and there's other things we could do with them so yeah we're gonna go for the lumber mill next we do have a building that synergizes with our cornerstone where fuel recipes are 33 percent faster the kiln makes coal which is a fuel recipe and coal is four times more efficient than wood when you burn it at the hearth you get one minute of fuel for one coal versus 15 seconds for one wood and you need to always keep this thing burning or really bad things happen plus we can make bricks more efficiently not quite as efficient as the other building we pass on where it was three clay to two bricks but it's four clay to two bricks which is much better than six clay to two bricks plus we also have access to the jerky recipe with six meat or six insects plus some wood which we have plenty of wood we can make 10 jerky so our food is more efficient and lizards get a move the buff for eating jerky so yeah we're gonna choose a kiln for sure finally we get two farming blueprints because this biome has way more fertile soil we're definitely gonna want either the small farm or plantation but i'm not sure which yet it looks like the cornerstone we chose is better than i thought it's buffing up our stone cutter camp because i guess this is considered a fuel recipe because you need clay for bricks i guess i wonder what other buildings this is gonna affect i thought it was just a kiln we survived the storm without incident and we got one of the best possible cornerstones in the game i would say we get one extra to our wood production so we're just gonna be cranking out wood also after surviving the storm we get some newcomers to choose from and to do all things wood related we're gonna take the three beavers and this is gonna allow us to stock up not only these two wood cutting camps with three beavers each we can also stock up the lumber mill with two beavers and they have the same bonus that wood cutting beavers have a 10 percent chance to get four planks instead of two i decided to open our first dangerous glade which is kind of a risky move but we did so when a trader was about to arrive which does make it a little bit more safe and we'll get into why in a second this dangerous glade does not require any materials to clear though so we got kind of lucky on that while working it it just gives negative 12 to beavers resolve and the reward is really good 15 percent extra wood cutting speed plus three ancient tablets which have a really high value of eight a pop so that's 24 amber total and then 30 insects if we started working it right now beavers resolve would drop down to negative three and they'd start leaving but if we give them lighter treatment their resolve would only drop down to two so we'll grab some wizards that are doing less important tasks like this person should not be making bricks because we can make them at the kiln now and these two lizards stone cutting are stone cutting nothing because we ran out of clay over here there is some more clay over here but we don't really need clay right now and it's pretty far away those lizards will now come up here and start clearing out this camp also there is a ruined warehouse over here that we can rebuild which we probably should do because it's in a pretty good location we could use this warehouse as a drop-off spot for a farm if we put it here there's a bunch of fertile soil in this area and the cool thing about these warehouses is they're magically linked so people drop in goods over there they can grab the goods from this main warehouse as if the goods had teleported over here and vice versa people can grab goods from this warehouse so the warehouse is a really powerful building if we do salvage it we get quite a few things back though 30 reed and 30 mushrooms and building warehouses is not that expensive it's just two bricks fabrics but mainly parts so once we build it we have the bricks to do it and we'll put a lizard on that the reason why we opened the dangerous glade when we did is a lot of the time traders will have goods to help you clear them out before we do any trading with him we finished this quest to keep lizard resolve above 13 and we did that by just giving lizards unfair treatment and housing them and that was pretty much it to unlock these other three quest options we have to pick which one we want here the traders here so we can sell them goods worth 15 amber and we get 10 amber back plus 20 oil and two villagers which i think is much better than this reward on the left the next quest has basically the same objective as the quest we just picked up sell goods worth 16 amber and acquire 10 amber which would be ewing from us if we turn the quest in the rewards on the right are much more interesting plus one is stone production and clay production and we just have to rebuild or salvage destroyed buildings found in the forest which we will definitely do and we have to find three glades this reward on the right is going to be much better if we do any stone or clay production and it's free to do so we're going to pick that one for the next quest we can get plus one resin production which would be amazing because we're getting one resin every time we chop down a tree fuel also would burn 25 percent longer in hearths and we get 20 copper bars we just have to sacrifice 20 coal and oil at the hearth which we almost certainly will be able to do we should be able to find oil from a trader the quest on the left is pretty easy to do we get plus one production yields for all packet goods which is very good if we do start producing packs of goods which right now we have no need to and the other rewards are pretty good but i want that plus one resin production then finally if we do get our beavers in a really good mood we get plus 15 percent wood cutting speed which would obviously be very good 30 biscuits for beaver food and 10 tools or if we want to go down the jerky production route we can get plus two to jerky production we can increase the ratio that we get for that from six to ten to six to twelve but i do think the increased wood cutting speed synergizes more with the fact that we get more resin from chopping trees so we're going to go for reinforced axes to get beavers in a really good mood we'd like to buy some pickle goods and biscuits from this trader and if we buy enough of those we might be able to get our beavers in a good enough mood to complete that quest the only thing is this trader has a really nice upgrade plus one to plant fiber production and we do currently have a blueprint for a farm that can make plant fiber if we sell the guide goods worth 15 amber we can complete that first quest and we'll sell them all our resin because we're getting so much of that plus eight planks because we're mass producing planks we don't have any way to smelt this copper ore so we'll just sell them that and we'll sell them just a few bricks and that will do it we're gonna get 10 amber from turning in the quest plus we need to buy seven from him so that we can buy this plant fiber perk and you'll notice we do get kind of ripped off for buying 
amber from him. We have to pay 1.25 amber for every one of his. That's because of the difficulty. We still have about six amber to trade with, which will hopefully be enough to buy enough pickle goods and enough biscuits to be able to satisfy the beavers. To be safe, maybe we should buy a few more and sell off some bricks, which we can produce more of. We'll buy 15 biscuits and 14 pickle goods for some extra goods that we have. And the reason why we wanted to buy so many is because the beavers are going to start eating through them immediately. And before we check that out, let's take his amber. And then we can turn this quest in for the 10 amber and a 20 oil. I completely forgot about this, but we can sacrifice this oil for this quest. After getting that amber though, we'll buy this perk for the plus one to plant fiber production. The other perks he had was a small farm to make vegetables and grain or plus two to pottery production, which just weren't as good in my opinion. So the beavers are going to start eating that food, but it's not going to increase their mood that much because we're still working this fallen beaver traders quest. Seven beavers ate the biscuits and we have eight left. And seven beavers also ate the pickle goods, but we're now completely out of that stuff because I forgot that lizards also eat pickle goods. There is a consumption control tab that gets unlocked later at like level three, but we don't have access to that right now, so we can't control who eats what. And so we're going to have to buy more pickle goods from the trader. We already got five resin back plus 20 planks. And that's enough for 13 more pickle goods, which hopefully will be enough. Those food supplies just need to hold out for three more minutes, and then the beavers will lose this minus 12 to their resolve, boosting it up to 19, and then we can give them lighter treatment to boost the resolve up to 24. We chose a plantation building, and we unlocked two more farms, which we don't want because we want to use farm fields for those plantations. We can, however, upgrade our small trapper's camp to a regular one, and we'll harvest all this stuff way more efficiently. And now it takes only 17 seconds to harvest meat, insects, and eggs versus 25, and we can move our trapper camp over here to harvest bigger nodes like this stormbird nest, which not only has more yields, 70 on each, and there's three here, there's also a 40% chance to get meat each time we do harvest it, and down here there was only a 20% chance to get leather, and on a smaller stormbird nest there was only a 20% chance to get meat. We finished with the fallen beaver trader event, and we are completely out of food. There's three beavers now unaffected by pickle goods, and crap it just dropped down to four, and only six beavers are affected by biscuits, that's gonna drop as well. We're gonna run out of food, so we should try to boost this right now, and the way we could is take everyone off of woodcutting, and that's gonna lower hostility to the forest, so they only get negative two here, and right now they are being boosted back up to 25 resolve, now it's dropping to 23. To lower hostility to the forest down to zero, we could start sacrificing coal, but it's looking like that's actually not gonna matter. The resolve dropped back down to 22, okay I just gave up for now. We make it through the next storm without much difficulty and we can choose another cornerstone. There's no real guarantee we're gonna be finding many insects on this biome, so I don't think this one's that good. This one which increases mineral ore production by 33% will definitely be useful, and I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna apply to, but I think a lot. I'm not sure if it's applying to the stonecutter camp. It looks like we're collecting this clay really fast, but there's no upgrade on here to indicate that the perk's working. The kiln also does not have the upgrade as well, despite the fact that it can make bricks here, but maybe it only applies when we're making bricks here. Either way, we'll find out later, and in the meantime, we got some newcomers. We'll take our first two humans, and we can set them up with a farm. We made this plantation in not an ideal spot, I guess. I need to rebuild it down here so it has access to all these farm fields, which is completely fine. It just costs two planks, and we have 80 of them. Once we are done, though, we can put two humans on it, and they have a 10% chance of doubling their yield when farming. We're now going to open up this next dangerous glade, and we're a bit late on this. I like to open up dangerous glades at the start of the drizzle season, because now we're only going to have one season before the storm to clear this out. To clear this out, we actually don't need any resources, and all woodcutters and gatherers get a negative 18 penalty to resolve, but we can just take everyone off of woodcutting and gathering. And while we're clearing it, the queen's impatience will grow 175% faster, but we can counter this out if we just send the goods to her, and we get 0.5 reputation that will counter out the impatience that we got. Or we can keep the goods, but we don't need coal because we've been producing it. We have 94 coal. The crystallized dew is really good to make tools out of, but we don't have a building to make them, I think. And then we don't really need the pottery right now. And so I think for those reasons, we'll just send the goods to the citadel, and we'll actually wait to investigate this so that it's overlapping with the storm, and we'll just take everyone off of gathering when the storm hits, because already we don't really want woodcutters during the storm anyways. As for the rest of this glade, it pretty much sucks. There's a large dewberry bush that requires a camp that we don't have, and then some mushrooms, and two caches, which we don't have tools for. We do get the ability to choose some new quests. I don't even think we can do this one right now. I'm pretty sure we need to level up to give our villagers luxury. So I'm pretty sure we're forced to do the one on the left, which is not gonna be hard. We just need to make 20 pack of crops and we need to get 24 farm fields, which right now we have 14, I think. And so we need to find more fertile land and glades. The reward is not that good because we're not doing any grain production. Although eight parts is decent and four new villagers is also good. And that's gonna unlock this next quest. This one requires beaver resolve to be above 26 for 120 seconds, which other quests 
quest is 24 resolve we do though we get plus one the roots production which our farm is berries and plant fiber so that doesn't really help us i think this one on the left is pretty cool if we do find ancient tablets we discover three glades we get 20 pottery every time we discover a new glade plus some other helpful stuff like 10 amber for this and then the tools we could use we have 12 minutes before the next quest unlocks so we won't pick that quest just yet the next trader is here and first we'll go over their perks in three wine for every 15 ale produced which right now we have no way to make ale as far as i know plus two to fabric production is really good though and this third one is not necessary because we're not mass producing packs of goods we definitely want the plus two to fabric production in order to get that i'm thinking we just sell the three ancient tablets that we would have used on the quest so i guess we found these from a glade earlier i forgot about that we can buy 17 of our amber and then i guess we don't need to sell all three of them we can just sell some resin that we're not using right now we'll sell 38 resin for her 17 amber and then we'll buy the perk with that and then i'm thinking for our next building we could choose a leather worker which would give us a three to two ratio plus our perk would be three to four ratio or if we want to take a crappy ratio at our crude workstation which is a six to four we could go for the clothier to produce coats for our beavers which would make them happy and so i think we're going to do that two minutes before the next storm we started to clear out the open vault and we didn't have to take everyone off wood cutting one beaver is thinking about leaving but that's with six still on wood cutting in the reverse that we just take one more off wood cutting we still have three beavers wood cutting though through this event which i thought for sure like no one be able to gather we just had to take everyone off of gathering duty but now a lizard is considering leaving because we have a lot of lizards gathering we'll take them off the stone cutting camp and the storm is here so we're gonna have to take all the lizards off of gathering i'm sure so there is still lizards gathering up here at the trappers camp take them off of that and that's still not gonna be enough let's take all of our beavers off of wood cutting the lower the forest hostility and voila we should be good a lizard is considering leaving but we'll just give him lighter treatment for a second bam he's good after easily surviving the storm we get to choose a cornerstone deserted caravans is very interesting 50 percent production speed on pretty much everything i think but you can't trade unfortunately and trading is really important at least for what we're trying to do like we pumped out 144 planks that we want to trade we'll just take this perk on the right and we'll try to get people in good enough moods to be able to get 40 water skins although i doubt it with the next batch of newcomers i think we'll just take the beavers and the humans they seem to be way more useful in this biome we open up another dangerous clade and it does require a resource that we definitely have a plethora of we'll use the resin for this and as for the reward we don't really need this stuff too much the sea marrow is very useful but i think we'll just send all the goods to the citadel for the free reputation point while we're working it a fishman totem is going to spawn every 60 seconds that's going to terrify people and it's going to increase hostility in the forest hopefully we get done with this before the storm hits which we should definitely be able to do the clearance lasts for four minutes i think so it's just going to take time to bring the resin over and we should have plenty of time to clear that out inside the glade there's more fertile soil which is really good we need that for a quest and there's this scribe building that we can rebuild to allow us to produce scrolls much more efficiently and ale and tools that we were not able to make we'll definitely rebuild this thing we'll send a human over to do it and one thing i should have definitely done before starting this glade event is put a warehouse near the farm because we're going to want one here anyways and then people could have grabbed this resin from this warehouse which would have sped this process up by quite a bit because yeah we have already started working this and we have a fishman totem to deal with but to send someone over here to investigate this thing to lower the forest hostility by 60. while that's all going on we had beavers open up this small glade we got some more farmable soil over here but more importantly that was the third glade that we needed to open for this quest we now get plus one to stone and clay production a new quest unlocks so we got to pick one here and we're just gonna go for the beaver resolve quest i'm almost certain we should be able to push the resolve above 26 and this tavern actually would help us if we had the ability to make it i just realized this is not a reward this is the objective we have to build one we have to make 50 ale and then we complete the quest to get more ale production and this one as well may not be doable if we don't find any villagers from camps and glades after the next storm we're going to open up another danger glade and there could be villagers in there but there's no guarantee so we don't even care about the rewards that much we have 12 minutes before our next quest anyways so we don't have to decide right now the next storm is here and it's almost halfway done and we clear out this fishman cave in time there's still one fishman totem that's increasing hostility by 60. one of our beavers is in a pretty bad mood but we'll just give him lighter treatment for a little while and that will reverse that and it looks like one of our lizards is considering leaving i think that's a bluff though the storm should be over in time before they leave which yes that was the case now the storm's over we get another cornerstone the villagers with the leisure need fulfilled have a 20% chance to double their yields if we do that tavern quest and find a way to build a tavern and find a way to make ale both the beavers and humans could get this 20% chance to double their yields which would be insane for our production before we worry about that cornerstone the next trader's here and we need to buy more oil i messed up and there was a recipe that required oil that i forgot to turn off and so we used some of our oil which we did before have the perfect amount we'll sell them this ancient tablet for the oil plus we'll start selling plain 
so we have 174 planks we'll sell like 150 of them that's gonna be enough for 35 amber we could buy a ton of biscuits for the beavers i just don't know if that's gonna be enough to boost the resolve up to 26s that we need now the dude also has some perks armors can carry five additional items i think that increased their productivity by a ton harvesting crops is 25 percent faster and planting is 25 percent faster this stuff is really good for our biome and so we're gonna actually gonna buy it all we have 35 amber to start with and with just the amber that we have we can buy all those perks plus we'll just do this transaction for 145 planks in the ancient tablet and i need to figure out what food of his that we need to be able to make packs of crops for this quest we need either grain roots mushrooms or veggies none of which we're currently producing and this guy does have all of that roots are edible so we should just buy the roots and as far as what we sell we'll just sell all the planks we can sell a bunch of coats as well. We have plenty of fabric to be able to make coats, so we can just sell all the coats actually. We'll sell all the resin as well. And then we have 16 packs of building materials, which we've been making from planks, and I don't even think we need those. We'll sell all the building materials and we'll buy some veggies, I guess. We are kind of lacking in the veggie department. All right, that will do a perfectly even transaction. We can now start mass producing these packs of crops with our roots and veggies. I guess the lizards that were here had nothing better to make, so they just started making the pack of building materials out of planks. They're like, and eh, we don't need that many planks, which I respect that. Our beavers now have biscuits which the humans are going to eat as well there's no way for us to prevent this we don't have the consumption control tab plus our lizards are currently manufacturing more coats these do wear out over time but we're currently making 20 so we should be fine if we want to make more good food for our beavers and humans we could go for the bakery and we can make biscuits and pies unfortunately we can't make flour though and so i think we'll go for the rain mill which is the most efficient flour production building to get this quest done that we should have done a long time ago we're going to start sacrificing the oil and the coal sacrificing oil is going to increase global production speed of everyone basically and sacrificing coal is is gonna increase everyone's mood. I was gonna time this for like a super efficient time, but there's no reason to. It doesn't take that long to burn through 20 of each, so you know, it's not that big of a deal. And we have 270 coal, which is a crazy amount. Never seen that much coal. And that's because we've been just mass producing coal at this kiln. Three lizards have been making this full time. If we do get insects or meat, they'll make jerky. But then if they're not doing anything, they're just going to mass produce coal. And we've had plenty of wood to be able to supply that. And all right, so we actually burn one extra oil. We now get the plus one resin production. And right now we're getting two resin every time we cut down a tree. And I don't even know if the plus one resin thing is going to increase that. We do get three newcomers. We're going to take the three humans because they can farm really well. And I was actually looking for humans to be able to man this plantation. We brought some woodcutters over to help clear out the rest of these trees because I'm sure there's a couple of farm fields that are blocked by the trees. And one thing I forgot about while we're over here is this scribe actually can make ale. It's not a bad ratio, five grain or five roots and three pottery water skins or barrels for ale. We don't really have a great way to make this stuff though. We'd have to buy the grain from traders probably. Or we also have that grain delivery line perk which will give us three grain per minute. But the whole point of us wanting to do the leisure thing is so we get that 20% chance of doubling yields. And we still don't have to pick our purchase yet. We have three new building options to choose from. This one in the middle will produce flour really well, and so we could make pies and biscuits from that if we find a bakery in the next building. We're gonna hope that we do. And we get the tavern. Very nice. The human house and lizard house, I believe, are unlockable if you're high enough level. So seeing these is really a bummer. They just take up building slots. But yeah, getting the tavern ensures that we can do what I was just talking about. To make barrels for the tavern so we can mass produce ale, we could go for the provisioner, which turns copper bars plus planks into barrels. And we get a really good ratio 2 to 10 so even though we can't make copper bars i don't think we'd have to 22 copper bars would be 220 barrels or if we want way better fabric efficiency right now it's six to four with our bonus the weaver will give us a two to four ratio and i think that sounds actually more attractive we're gonna go for that and then we'll just buy the containers we need for ale we can go pottery water skins or barrels so there's a lot of options there it's time to put some on the weaver so we can mass produce fabric we're gonna get a lot of plant fiber from our plantation if i remember right and turn off training gear and pack of trade goods we don't need that stuff and then we're also gonna get leather from this giant silk shell brood mother i gotta move our trappers camp over here we can start harvesting that it was harvesting the eggs which we don't care about as much as we want to get a bunch of leather right now so we can start getting a ton of fabric meanwhile over here we finished building the tavern as long as we have people in it it increases global resolve by three you can see our beavers are in a really good mood if we give them lighter treatment it boosts the resolve up to 24 and then we can start sacrificing coal for example to lower hostility to the forest and that's going to boost the resolve up to 26 we could even sacrifice more coal to increase the resolve up to 29 actually and this is going to start burning through coal pretty fast but we have 318 coal and we just need to hold this for 40 seconds and even this is actually not boosting in their mood to the mood threshold that we need to get to so that we start gaining reputation we want to just take people off of woodcutting that would do it there's some people woodcutting over here just take them off of woodcutting and that will boost it 
up above the reputation threshold. So we're now gaining 0.22 reputation per minute, which is, you know, not that much. It's about the same as the Queen's Impatience is rising though. I also just noticed the beavers have been drinking ale because we've been making ale at the scribe. Turned all of our roots into it, I guess, which might have not been the play. We are making 30 more though. And crap, their resolve is about to fall because it's time for the storm. We need to sacrifice more coal, I guess. And we need to hold their resolve up here for 15 more seconds, which I really don't think is going to happen. We can sacrifice wood, I guess, to lower hostility to zero. <laughs> we actually only need to sacrifice 40 wood per minute, and we have 33, so we can hold this for a little while. We're boosting the resolve up to the reputation threshold during the storm, which is crazy. And look at the humans. They do not care about this storm at all. Like, this is actually nuts because we're on year four. And the storm is pretty much not affecting anyone except for it's affecting the lizards. And we finished three quests actually. We made all these pack of crops. So we get the extra grain production, all the people. We get the four beavers as well, the plus one root production. And the plus 15% wood cutting speed, as if we needed that. And then we get this other quest, which we need to make a tavern and produce 50 ale, which I should have actually picked this quest earlier. Luckily, we don't have to build another tavern, which wouldn't have been that big of a deal, I guess. But we do have to make more ale, and we actually have to give them the ale, so it didn't matter that I didn't accept a quest earlier. We do also have the final quest. We need to have 20 humans for 30 seconds. Right now we have nine, so that's not really doable. Never seen a quest where we need to get 11 people for the quest. That's crazy. I like this one though. Plus one to coal production. We just need to get the need for religion fulfilled though. We don't have a religion building yet. We do have the ability to choose another blueprint though. And it is a brewery so we can make ale very efficiently. We'll definitely take that so we can just keep people super happy at really good efficiency. It's four grain and roots plus only two pottery water skins or one barrel for 10 ale. We could also be able to make tools at one more efficiency but that'd be like the only option we're definitely taking the brewery we got a new perk and it's again this stupid one where we get more water skins although we do need water skins to brew ale so i guess you know we'll take it and people are actually in really good moods so we might start generating those water skins and yeah they're actually at the threshold so we gain 0.15 reputation per minute and the beavers are getting there if we just made them like pickle goods which we can make at the brewery actually we can make them out of berries plus water skins if we had water skins but we use all of our water skins already the humans are Resolve was so high because we had no one woodcutting. After putting everyone on woodcutting, this is what we're looking at. We can't give them lighter treatment anymore because the lizards are very upset. Plus, we just opened up this dangerous glade, and inside there's a threat that's going to destroy all trade goods in our warehouse. So we have quite a few trade goods, so we don't want that. To open this up, we'll use fabric. We have plenty of fabric, and we'll send these goods to the citadel because I don't think we care too much about this stuff. Like, it's more valuable for sure, but we want to keep the queen happy, so we're going to investigate that. It's only going to take a minute 30 once we bring the goods over here. Also, down here, there's a butcher building which we currently do not have the blueprint for i've never seen this and it can make skewers jerky and oil which we currently cannot make skewers or oil for just four bricks and four planks we can rebuild that and we'll assign someone to do that while we're doing all that we have a trader that visited us and she's got some blueprints plus 20 percent food production speed is probably the best out of all the ones i'm seeing here because we don't really care about plus one mushroom production well this forager camp allows us to gather larger grain roots and vegetable nodes i was looking around the map and we currently have not discovered any of those so we don't care about that too much we're we're just going to buy that increased global food production speed. Then we also can use pottery to be able to make beer. We still do need either roots or grain, which she does not have. But she does have 10 tools, which can accelerate our wind condition. To be able to afford all that, we're going to sell all of our fabric and these two wildfire essence plus a bunch of resin. And that is just about perfect. We could also sell a bunch of pack of crops. Guess we made extra of those building materials and i guess don't sell the wildfire essence just yet and that is almost a perfect transaction we got some new visitors and there's a lot of things that we can gather with the lizards for more efficiency so we're gonna offer an extra lizard over an extra beaverman and the five parts i think is way better as well as a reward during the next storm our resolve is not doing super great we're still only at hostility level three though because we're burning through 40 coal per minute i decided we care less about our 283 coal than our food supplies which we would have a 10 percent chance of consuming twice the amount of food if we we're at hostility four so by burning this much coal we're just preventing that and the storm's two-thirds of the way done so we won't have to burn through that much coal and as far as our food supplies we are mass producing pickle goods from pottery right now which is making the beavers and the lizards very happy and we do survive another storm i still don't know if this cornerstone we chose earlier is actually doing anything we could get another stack of that but it may be doing nothing so we're going to take the extra two villagers on each newcomer group. In our next building selection, we finally can make the cookhouse, which is cool because we already have the ability to make flour for biscuits. Unfortunately, right now, though, we cannot make flour because we don't have any grain, roots, or mushrooms. And with that perk that increases roots production by one, we could have got a ton of roots from this large root deposit in a new dangerous glade that we just opened. You get 70 for each node, but you need a tier two forager camp. And we could have bought the blueprint from this from that trader earlier, and we probably should have. To clear out this dangerous glade, we're going to use quite a bit of our fabric. And there's no negative effects while working it. It just doesn't give you that much time to get the 
resources and if you don't clear it out it will kill five random villagers as far as the reward we're going to take the reputation as we're getting pretty close to winning we only need about four and a half more reputation to win so we're going to hyper focus on that also in this glade two lizards and humans will join us bringing our total human count up to 13. we do have a quest of 20 humans which we probably won't get there but if we just give them 20 berries which we have 62 of those people will join us and if we send them to the citadel we don't get reputation so we'll take the people and finally in this glade there is a press which can make oil more efficiently than the butcher i think we'll just salvage this for the flour and the meat we're not doing that great on food right now and we don't really need the press our next group of newcomers is going to bring us four humans bringing our total human count to 17 so we just need three more humans for that quest it took quite a while to deliver that fabric over to the ancient shrine but the humans are finally working it they are going to beat the threat timer by one minute so we don't lose five random villagers i should have built a warehouse right next to it and we would have beat the event by way more we'll do that in this next dangerous glade we do have a plethora of the materials required here we'll just use the resin i guess we'll build a warehouse right next to it lowering the amount of time we have to deal with this negative perk get 60 hostility every 60 seconds and as long as this isn't overlapping with the storm it shouldn't matter too much the storm is coming in two minutes 16 seconds so the plan is we build a warehouse wait till the storm is like probably two thirds way done then we start working this and we should have plenty of time we could even probably wait till the storm's over but i don't want to fail the threat all our goods are worth 50 percent less to traders which we have plenty of goods so it doesn't matter too much but we get one impatient point is the main thing this also might be the last glade we open and i've been stockpiling our tools and we could just start using those tools to open up these caches to send them to the citadel over here there's another medium abandoned cache we'll send these kids to the citadel as well in this glade there's two medium abandoned caches we'll also send these kids to the citadel that's gonna be 2.25 reputation for these three caches fortunately a trader just got here so we won't be able to use the amber and the stuff this guy has is really good 0.5 reputation we'll definitely take that accelerate our win condition biscuits cannot be produced in the kill in the rain mill we don't care about that the building for them plus two to ale production is good though so we'll buy 12 of his amber for 108 resin and then we'll buy that ale production perk plus we'll buy the dudes 50 ale because we need that for a quest and i like to buy all of his tools but i don't know if we can afford it and overall there's a lot of stuff we don't need we had way too many planks clay plant fiber i don't want to sell all of it just in case but i like to buy a bunch of this food before the storm we just buy a little bit of everything just to make everyone happy this might be our last storm so we'll just start burning up all of our coal we're doing 60 coal per minute and 40 wood per minute so lower hostility back down to three and we're not even having to deal with insatiable hunger yet and yeah with the storm about two thirds of the way done we still have plenty of fuel left and if you'll notice our reputation bar is looking really good we're getting tons of reputation for opening caches and we only need one more reputation to win the game which we could have gotten if i turned in this cups and glasses quest but i forgot about it and you can see how quickly people drink through ale we bought 50 of it at the start of the storm we're down to seven for our last reputation point we can just clear out this hidden trader cemetery and we did build a warehouse over here and the lizards we assigned to this did grab goods from a far away warehouse and oh, this guy's going to a really far away can we just unassign him reassign him i guess two lizards can't grab goods from the same warehouse at the same time or something i'm not really sure where's this guy going okay he's gonna start working the event the other lizard is gonna be doing resting i guess but it doesn't matter because as long as one person's working it we're fine I think the timer is going down slower though because only one dude is technically working right now although i'm not sure and to end the game quicker if we were doing some type of speed run we'd sacrifice sea marrow because we have 37 of it that's not being used the more we sacrifice the quicker we get done with glade events we're doing a burning out of sea marrow but it did give us a nice boost here and after completing that event the game is over we get a bunch of xp and we unlock some pretty critical stuff like the rain collector which can produce spark dew and advanced herbalist camp so we do get faster production on that we can harvest the higher tier nodes after completing the run we can see that we have a 100% win rate and we did a bunch of achievements discover 10 glades we won the game on settler difficulty or higher trade goods were 50 amber for another 50 xp they're all 50 xp for some reason if they do give xp which i think some of the harder ones should get more xp complete five glade events very easy win a game near the fertile grounds modifier which i think that modifier was the increased 60 percent chance for glades to have fertile soil and down here we got more achievements won the game on pioneer difficulty or higher of course more xp for trading goods were 200 amber we had 40 villagers so we get the lamp which is just a visual thing like the pipe no villagers died so we can achievement for that for the xp won the game on veteran difficulty or higher for the pipe ending which again it's just visual thing but then down here since we won on viceroy we get a new trader and this guy sells mystery loot boxes so we can get addicted to gambling we won the game with no dead villagers on viceroy and that's gonna be it for the achievements because we got so many we're boosted up to level four as far as the rewards i think we definitely want this one you have one additional option to choose from when choosing blueprints so instead of picking from three buildings we can pick from four obviously that's amazing and without even looking at the other ones 
I'm gonna say that's gonna be the best. So we're gonna go for this. In 10% more Citadel resources after winning, I think. The Citadel resources are the stuff that we can spend that we got after winning. And we lose 2% slower. For this next upgrade, we get the consumption control tab, which is really good. It would have helped us in the last run. You can choose what people eat and if they're allowed to drink or not, for example. And then finally, we get the extra blueprint. And with that, we only have 29 food left. So we gotta choose an upgrade here. With this upgrade, we can do trade routes, which is kind of a core feature. Although this one allows us to upgrade hubs to the neighborhood level, which is not only really easy to do, it increases the production by 10%. So it's overall a 12% production boost. I think we definitely want this for sure without even looking at the other ones. Oh, this one is pretty cool. 1% chance to get bonus yields. So instead of 10%, it's 11. I'm guessing this not only applies to a racial boost, but there's a lot of perks that increase chance to get bonus production. You can also start with vegetables and meat, which I don't think is too crazy necessary. All this bonus not only gives 2% walking speed, you start with plus one embarkation points, so you can start with more stuff. That bonus is going to be necessary before this one because this allows you to start with stone and clay. But from what I remember, they take two embarkation points each, and we only have one right now. But yeah, if I do an episode two, we'll mainly have four buildings to choose from, which is going to be huge. And the neighborhood hub upgrade is also huge. Also, here's our caravan lineup. We got nine lizards or four humans and beavers, plus two randoms. We'll definitely go for those. And it looks like that caravan starts with a lot more stuff in general. 